What's up, everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about a few things surrounding the Arkham games and this transition into Gotham Knights with a lot of things that we saw in the older Arkham games. And when I say the older Arkham games, I'm not talking about Arkham Knight. So Arkham Knight being the closest, even though it is somewhat older than Gotham Knights, it is still the newest of all the other Arkham games. It seemed to have a lot in its favor in the sense that, you know, the combat systems and the mechanics from the other Arkham games had already been very polished before they got delivered into that game to the point where Arkham Knight is kind of outlandish. It's more of a flexing of development muscles for, uh, you know, a studio like Rocksteady. In fact, they had so much flex power, they added a second character for Batman, which was the Batmobile. There was a very intricate part of the entire game as much as players do not necessarily appreciate this particular addition which i'm not going to sit here and lie to you it was actually the biggest roadblock for me to complete the game because when i got to new game plus and i was doing very well and i got to that very mind-numbing mission where you have to fight the arkham knight with your tank and then six other tanks and you have to be playing this stealth thing it actually stopped me for about two years before I went back and picked it up to finish it. So that's how much that system can be an eyesore, even though mechanically wise, in terms of game development and game mechanics, it is a marvel and a wonder. And so I think they got so carried away with their expertise. And that's me just being, you know, I might be being facetious about this, but I'm also going into a place where I think they just kind of like overdeveloped, uh, you know, the game. And I think maybe in a different context or Perhaps if the story had allowed for you not to be almost fully tethered to the Batmobile, it would have been pretty much the best superhero game in terms of, uh, you know, everything overall. But it only has to be the best superhero game to me in terms of mechanics. And I'm sure the Spider-Man folk are going to yell at me. But when we have a spider bike or a spider mobile that can be, you know, used to do all kinds of fun stuff that the Batmobile did, then we can talk about that in a different sense. So I'll give you maybe story, but in mechanics, Arkham Knight is very superior to almost every superhero game so far, just because because they actually took time, polished mechanics over years for Batman, and then added another character that's the Batmobile that was already solid. But it takes me to the side of the conversation where I look at the animations from Arkham City, and I'm looking at the way the game actually plays, the way the animations and the way the sound design is. It's a very gritty game. They moved the Arkham games slightly from a very bone-crushing game into a... I don't know, a much more uh, flamboyant system when they went to Arkham Knight. And I think most people, when they envision the Batman games, it's Arkham Knight that they envision, but not many people acknowledge that Ar Arkham City did have the sweet spot in terms of the combat formula, where the animations were not necessarily excessive. The animations were, uh, in a sense, very realistic. You saw the kinds of moves that Batman was doing whenever he was doing a takedown. The takedown camera really did show the accentuations of like his body movement and the skeletons and the way everything kind of changed, including the you know play speed of the animation as well. And so these things really did make Arkham City a very solid game and even today you know which is pretty much you know september of 2022 you can still put it as one of the better superhero games that's ever been made uh, from many perspectives you know if you want to kind of be more objective about it so just lately i was fortunate enough to finally start completing an upgrade for my computer and I was looking through old games and playing them using my new, uh, you know, graphics card that I finally was able to buy after two years. I started upgrading this computer two years ago. I <laughs> imagine buying some parts and then looking at GPU prices at that time and going, heck no, and having to wait 24 months. And I was looking at the game and playing the game. And this is footage I just got from today. And I have to say, it's something of a marvel to just see how this game plays and runs. And even with the modern, uh, you know, hardware that we have today, it still gives you a strong appreciation for the game, regardless of when you played it. The very first time I played it was on a PlayStation 3 console, and I could not stop thinking about how I wanted to go ahead and get myself a console and play the game. But I was still in college at that time. I'm somewhat of a, not old, but old man-ish. And at, after, right after college, 
college, I immediately got myself an Xbox and started playing the game. And then over time, I was able to get my hands on, you know, PC to eventually get a PC copy and play a better performance. And I still, till this day, enjoy every single time I pick the game up to play. The sound design is greedy. The combat design is very, very bone crushing. I like it. It's not flamboyant, which takes me to, you know, a place of looking at Gotham Knights. Gotham Knight seems to have taken the animation speed concept for their game uh, from, I don't know necessarily where, I think more like Assassin's Creed in terms of animation speed and somewhat like maybe Spider-Man, the way the game kind of runs, which is a sweet spot. Because I think that's actually where Spider-Man kind of took a lot of its reference from in the Arkham games. I think it took a lot of it from Arkham City and then just a little bit from Arkham Knight. Because, you know, Arkham Knight came out in 2015, Spider-Man came out in 2018. But if you think about it, Marvel Spider-Man was actually still in development by the time Arkham Knight came out. So Arkham City was the 2013 game that Marvel Spider-Man would have really used as a reference. And then everything else was just icing on the cake. So... Actually, City is the uh, you know MVP in that sense. And so you think about it, you're looking and saying, man, this is actually pretty cool that this game, Arkham City, was able to influence you know many superhero games. And sometimes when I see you know the the Gotham Knights uh, conversation span about animations and stuff, you know, I kind of look and say, you know, I wonder what the inspiration was in terms of the way they actually are, you know, running the game. And even though some people say the animation speed and, you know, whatever is not necessarily as fast as, you know, other games, I think they're looking at, say, Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight had fast animation speeds. Arkham City, the animation speeds, you could see a lot of the moves that were done. And maybe even 95%, you know, of all the hits that your character dealt. Whereas in Arkham, C in Arkham Knight, you might not see the way you hit a character. You just know you hit them or how you counter them. You may not necessarily see that. It interpolates animations the way the game is designed anyways. And so this is very cool to see, but in Gotham Knights, you get to see pretty much everything, you know, and there almost is no, um, you know, animation, uh, I would say alchemy that they do. They let you see everything going on in the animation. So for a lot of people, you're used to that snap fast, you know, snap to, you know, catch, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, the animation style that you see from some of these other games and then you come to Gotham Knights and the characters are doing everything and you're seeing all the frames of the animations play out. There is no, you know, frame matching of, or I would say frame shortening of, uh, of any kind going on much. And so it made Gotham Knights kind of take some people back in a sense, the very first time they saw it. And I think this is actually pretty cool because not unless you go back and like take a very close look at these things, are you going to be able to kind of highlight and say, oh, okay, so this is what they decided to do here. And then this is what these guys decided to do here. In fact, even within Rocksteady, you see the way the game changed from Arkham City to Arkham, uh, from Arkham Asylum to Arkham City to Arkham Knight. Arkham Asylum being much closer to Arkham City and then Arkham Knight being somewhat closer to, you know, uh, Arkham City in a sense, you know, in a, it's not too close, but it is kind of close because a lot had changed by that time and the development team had kind of grown much stronger. They had leveled up in terms of XP. And so it was just kind of in a different place for a lot of people. But this is something I wanted to keep in mind and I wanted to just discuss here on this video because I thought it was just quite interesting. Um, I haven't made a few videos in the last few days. I do have a lot of videos lined up, but I've been, you know, doing my setups and, you know, all that stuff. And Ghost, I saw you, buddy. You were looking at some, you know, <laughs> some computer parts pricing and, you know, benchmarks and stuff. So shout out to you. I left a comment for you on that video. Uh, or on that post that that gentleman put up for pricing and all that. That's that's how we are, man. We PC people, we got to look for the best value for buck and all that stuff, even if we have to wait for, the, you know, years. And I did. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy that I'm, you know, in this position where I want to play Gotham Knights at the you know, best quality that anyways that I can afford uh, in that sense. So we'll be talking a little bit more about all this stuff. And uh, hopefully I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. So thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. And hopefully we'll talk pretty soon. Peace out.